iOS 18 is here and the Photos app has had some big updates. Things never stay the same with any of our favorite apps. So a change to Apple Photos is nothing new. But what exactly does it mean? Well, let me help you dive into the exciting changes on the Photos app on iOS 18. And stick with me because at the end of this video, I'll share a tip that takes full advantage of one of these new features to keep your photo library in perfect order. So let's dive in. Quick tour, what's changed? The first thing you'll notice when you open the Photos app in iOS 18 is the new scrolling navigation. Gone are the separate tabs for library albums of view. Everything is now accessed by scrolling down from the main library view. At the top, you'll still find years, months and all photos, but days has now been replaced by recent days. We'll find that in a minute. As you scroll, you'll find sections like albums, people and pets, memories and the new trips collection. This new structure means you have to scroll through all your photo categories rather than tapping between them. It's a big change, but once you get used to it, you'll find it makes navigating your photo collection smoother and more intuitive. Now let's get into the deep dive on each of these sections and explore the biggest changes. Deep dive, exploring the key sections. Library, your main hub. The library is still where all your photos live, but now instead of tapping between tabs, you can simply pull down to access your full library view. You know you're in the library by the fact that the name at the top has changed from photos to library. At the bottom, you'll still see the familiar years, months and all photos section, allowing you to browse your photos based on time. Now you might have noticed a small, mysterious two arrowed icon in the bottom left hand corner, We'll get to that later, but spoiler alert, it's a really useful new tool that lets you sort and filter your photos in ways that you couldn't before. Recent days, a snapshot of your latest photos. One of the biggest changes is the removal of the days view. Instead, we now have recent days. This section automatically curates your most recent photos, giving you quick access to the last two weeks or so of pictures. If you're using an iPad, you'll still see days as an option, but on iPhone, Apple has switched this to a rolling 14 day view. This is really handy if you take a lot of daily photos and want to find something that you shot recently without scrolling through your entire album. But if you were someone who liked the day's view of its AI curated moments, you might miss this feature. Albums and folders, better sorting and organizing. Albums and folders are still here, but there are some great improvements that make it easier to manage your photos. Now, albums are grouped in three sections, personal, shared, and activity. Personal is where all of your custom albums live. Shared is where you can access albums that you've shared or that others have shared with you. And activity gives you an overview of what's been happening in your shared albums. One of the best new additions is that you can now create folders directly from your phone without the need of creating an album first. This makes organizing your photos so much easier, especially if you like to keep things structured. However, one feature still missing is the ability to create smart albums on your phone. Unfortunately, this is still limited to Mac. If you want to adjust how your albums are displayed, tap the three dot menu in the top right. From here, you can change the sort order or toggle between grid view and list view, depending on how you prefer to browse. When in an album, the view has a few more options. Starting on the right, you can change from summary, so you can only see a selection of photos, to a grid of everything. Then in the middle, you can see just photos or a movie of photos, which is kind of nice. Then we have these little two arrows again. What is that? Well, I won't spoil it for you. We'll get to that all in good time. People and pets, more powerful facial recognition. Okay, so mine only says people as I don't have any pictures of pets here. Sad, I know. But the facial recognition in the iOS 18 has a huge upgrade. If you're used to the people section before, it is now even smarter. Instead of just recognizing faces, the AI can identify people even when they're facing away from the camera, like if they're wearing the same outfit in multiple photos. You can also group people into custom collections. So if you regularly search for family or work friends, you can create a dedicated collection of those faces as a group. Pinned collections, a customizable sorting feature. 
Pin Collections is one of my favorite updates because it lets you create a customized view of key areas. By clicking Modify, you can add and remove collections, pin import albums, and even add Apple's standard collections like features, photos, or trips. If you have certain albums you access frequently, pin them to this collections area and you will always be able to find them. Memories, smarter AI generated photo collections. Memories are still here and Apple continues to use AI to create collections based on themes like trips, seasons, or locations, like over the years, sunsets, or beaches. If you used memory feature before, this feature works similarly, but the AI now does a better job of picking relevant images. Trips, a new way to organize your travel photos. This is a brand new feature that replaces the old places section. Trips automatically groups travel photos based on location and date, but it's not always perfect. If you took pictures on different days with gaps in between them, it might split them into separate trips. As you can see, it's kind of done for some of my trips where I've moved between countries, Lebanon and Jordan. You can rename or adjust these collections, but overall it's a really useful way to relive your travels. Featured photos, Apple's AI picked best shots. Apple now selects featured photos based on aesthetic patterns or moments it thinks are important. Sometimes it picks really great shots, other times not so much. You can remove a photo from a feature if it's not quite what you wanna see. Media types, quick access to your different file types. This section remains pretty much unchanged. You can still find your videos, screenshots, panoramas, burst shots, selfies, time-lapse, screen recordings, you name it. It's great for quickly finding specific types of media. Utilities, hidden features and extra tools. The utility section is where you'll find favorites, hidden, recent deleted and duplicates, which if you hadn't checked out the deduplication tool, you really should. But there are some new additions. Following in the way of Google Photos, we now have handwriting documents and receipts sections so we can find some of the stuff we don't want, which is really useful. You can also find recently saved, viewed, and your imports here. Shared albums, a dedicated space for collaboration. There is now a separate section just for shared albums, making it easier to find and manage the albums you collaborate on with others. Wallpaper suggestions, Apple's personalized pics. Apple will now suggest photos to use as wallpapers based on images it thinks are best. If you like changing your background frequently, this is a fun new addition. Are you scrolling through all these menus and feeling overwhelmed by all of your photo clutter? If sorting your photos is something you're trying to get better at, then you might want to check out my Photo Mess Success courses. They are designed to help you get every photo in one place, declutter your library and create a system that actually works without the stress of losing something important. If this sounds like something you need, you can check it out at photomesssuccess.co.uk where I take you from photo mess to mastery one step at a time. But for now, let's get back to my top tips for getting the most out of the new Apple iOS. Top tips to get the most from iOS 18 photos. Make it personal with customize and reorder. Now for one of my favorite features, you can finally customize the Photos app layout to suit your needs. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see the option called customize and reorder. This allows you to rearrange different sections of your Photos app, moving your most used to the top and hiding anything you don't need. My favorite is to move the pinned collections to the top so I can add to albums quickly, then media types and utilities to the top, so this will help me keep on top of my photos, but check out my bonus tip for that one. You can also remove things that you don't want to see so you don't have to keep scrolling past them. I tend to remove featured photos because it doesn't seem to help me at all, and wallpaper suggestions because I just never use that. And the best part, if you ever change your mind, you can easily go back to the default by pressing the reset button in the top left. So don't worry. Library management, take control of your sorting options. Remember the two arrowed icon in the library view? This is where you can finally take control of how your photos are displayed. To get to the library view again, just scroll up and you'll see the word library so you know you're in the right place. And you'll get our little two arrowed icon. Tap it and you'll see options for sorting by recently added or date captured. But that's not all. This is also where you can filter your photos. You can choose to see only favorites, only edited photos, videos, and screenshots. Go back out and we can also change the view options. 
You can zoom in and out, change the aspect ratio, but also this is where we have a controversial one. You can hide your screenshots from your main feed. If you enable this, your screenshots won't clutter up your library, but big warning, they are still there stored and taking up space, which you are paying for. So check out my bonus tip so this doesn't get out of hand. Profile view, where to find your storage information. Remember the old formats, you could see how much content you had at the bottom of your photos, separated as photos and videos. Now you just get a total at the top. You now have to click into your profile picture in the top right hand corner to access your full storage breakdown. Once you're there, you'll see how many photos and videos you have, as well as when it was last synced. This section also includes some useful toggles for managing video settings, HDR, albums, and sharing preferences. If you like to keep an eye on your storage, this is the new place to check. Some slightly odd things you might not notice at first. There are a couple of small but notable changes that might catch you off guard. First, the search function has been moved to the top of the Photos app. If you're used to looking at it at the bottom or in the middle, it might take some time to get used to. Also, if you ever find yourself lost or stuck in a submenu, you can now use the X button. It might be at the bottom, it might be at the top. Just look for an X and it will take you back out. It's a little thing, but it's nice to have a quick way to navigate back without scrolling endlessly. Bonus tip, monthly cleanup. And here's my game-changing tip. Use the media types and utilities to help your monthly cleanup. By moving them to the top of your customization, you'll be able to keep on top of your photo junk. First, use the duplicate folder in utilities to review your duplicates. Open the folder and review your duplicates every month. Tap to merge to keep the best version and free up space. Then go to your media types and check out your screenshots, especially if you're hiding them from your library view. Check out videos as well as they can take up a lot of space. Finally, use your pinned collections of albums to add any favorite photos into important album collections like holidays or events. Doing these little tasks will mean you're keeping on top of your photos and able to enjoy them. And there you have it, your essential guide to the Photos app updates in iOS 18. But what if you want to have a bit of a declutter of your digital photos? Then check out this video next. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more photo organizing tips. Have fun rediscovering your memories. I'll see you in my next video.